Welcome to lecture 19, Spanning Sets and Linear Independence, section 4.4 of the text Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson, 7th edition, Sengage Learning. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. Lecture goals. We have three goals for our lecture. Goal number one. Write a linear combination of a set of vectors in a vector space. Number two, determine whether a set S of vectors in a vector space is a spanning set of V. And number three, determine whether a set of vectors in a vector space is linearly independent or linearly dependent. Let us start accomplishing these goals. Firstly, linear combination of vectors. A vector V in a vector space is called a linear combination of other vectors in that same vector space, namely U1, U2, UK. If I can write V in the form V equals C1, U1 plus C2, U2 plus plus CK, UK where the CIs are scalars, the real numbers. Let us start with a very simple example. Let W be the vector with entries 1, 1, 1, that's a vector in R3. And let S be the set given by V1, V2, V3. Can we write W as a linear combination of the vectors in S. So the procedure for solving this kind of question is to set W equals C1 V1 plus C2 V2 plus C3 V3. And then use your definition, standard definition of course, of scalar multiplication, addition, equality of vectors, and we end up with C1 minus c3 2c1 plus c2 3c1 plus 2c2 plus c3 are the first second and third components and simple equality in vectors i have this system of linear equations three equations three unknowns set up my augmented metrics, plug that into math studio, do my reduced row echelon form, and I end up with this system infinitely many solutions. I.e., if I set my T to be equal to 1, then my W is written as a linear combination of V1, V2, and V3. Beautiful. Spanning set of a vector space. Let S equals V1, V2 up to VK be a subset of the vector space V. Then we say that S is a spanning set of V or S spans V if every vector in V can be written as a linear combination of the vectors in S interesting so if i pick a vector v in v i must be able to write that vector as a linear combination of the vectors in s for s to be called a spanning set of v let's check that out with these examples the first example is actually called a standard basis for r3 I will discuss this some more in section 4.5. So let S be the set with the vectors V1, V2, V3, where V1 is 1, 0, 0, V2 is 0, 1, 0, and V3 is 0, 0, 1. Then this set actually spans R3 because if I pick an arbitrary vector U equals U1, U2, U3 in R3, I can always write U as a linear combination of these three vectors where my C1 equals U1, my C2 equals U2, and my C3 equals U3. Observe that my C1, C2, C3 must be some combination of U1, 
u2 u3 for s to span r3 we will discuss this some more in class look at another example this is also a standard basis for p2 the set of polynomials of order 2 the vectors are 1 x x squared if i pick an arbitrary vector in p2 which is a plus bx plus cx squared then i can write that vector as a linear combination of these three vectors precisely alpha 1 is a alpha 2 is b alpha 3 is c and that gives me a plus bx plus cx squared yes s is a linear combination of p2 now can you verify that s defined as such spans r3 i.e can you find scalar c1 c2 c3 such that c1 times this vector plus c2 times this vector plus c3 times this vector equals some u which is given as u1 u2 u3 in r3 play with this and let's look at it some more in class the span of a set if s is defined by the vectors v1 v2 vk then the span of s is the set of all linear combinations of the vectors in s i.e span s equals the set summation c i v i i from 1 to n where the c i's are real numbers if we can prove that span s actually equals the vector space v then we say that v is spanned by s or s spans v theorem span s is a subspace of v all you have to do is use your definition of a subspace which we've seen before precisely the subspace criterion and verify that span s is a subspace of v moreover span s is actually the smallest subspace of v that contains s in the sense that every other subspace of v that contains s must also contain span s linear dependence and independence this is a very important definition so i want you to listen very carefully and make sure you understand the definition otherwise in proving linear independence and dependence you might find yourself going in circles so here we go a set of vectors as in a vector space is linearly independent if whenever a linear combination of those vectors is equal to zero all the scalars must be equal to zero i.e the homogeneous system from this vector equation has only the trivial solution i'm going to define linear dependence listen carefully a set of vectors s in the vector space is said to be linearly dependent if there exists scalars c1 c2 up to ck not all being equal to zero not all zeros such that c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus ck vk is equal to zero so if it is linearly independent all the scalars must be equal to zero if it is linearly dependent at least one of the scalars must be different from zero how do we verify linear independence and linear dependence testing for linear independence and linear dependence number one set the vector equation summation alpha i v i equals zero once this is done use your standard definition of 
scalar multiplication, addition, equality in vectors, and come up with your homogeneous system. Plug that into Math Studio. Use reduce row echelon procedure. And if you end up with a unique solution, then that means all the CIs are equal to zero, in which case the set S is linearly independent. If you end up with infinitely many solutions, then we conclude that S is linearly dependent. Example two, determine whether this vectors v1 v2 v3 whether these are linearly dependent or independent how do we do it we start by saying suppose alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus alpha 3 v3 is equal to zero remember the zero here is zero plus 0x plus 0x squared. Equate corresponding coefficients. End up with a system of linear equations. Plug that into Math Studio. Do your reduce row echelon procedure. And if you end up with a unique solution, linearly independent. Infinitely many solutions, linearly dependent. Beautiful and easy. I leave the details as a simple exercise for serious students. Let's look at a few theorems. Number one, a set S is linearly dependent if and only if at least one of the vectors Vj can be written as a linear combination of the others. Interesting. It's a very simple, beautiful, clean proof. Hint. Remember that S being linearly dependent means that some alpha J is different from zero, but a linear combination of all the VIs is equal to zero. So look at that one term, alpha J, VJ, move that over to the right hand side. Because alpha j is different from zero, you can divide by alpha j. So divide all through by negative alpha j. What do we have? Vj, a linear combination of all the other vi's. I would let you fill in the gaps. It's a beautiful proof. Corollary. Two vectors, u and v, in the vector space v are linearly dependent if and only if one is a scalar multiple of the other. Of course, that follows directly from the theorem. What does it mean again for u and v to be linearly dependent? That means there is some alpha i different from zero such that alpha 1 u plus alpha 2 v equals zero. I'll let you fill in the gaps. Thank you very much.